From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hey, what are you doing at the Valentine house? Get a car out here quick, Inspector. Terry Valentine's just been shot. Two guys now, showed slow up... slow down, slow down. When did all this happen? A few seconds ago. Ambulance? No good, Debaca. She... she died in my arms. Oh. Well, do you think they're still around there? They must be. I'm going looking. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a police matter. You stay put. I'll have a car there in five minutes and you can... Johnny, I heard that. Your gun. Now, look, you're all wound up. Don't do anything. Put... Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Britain Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of further expenditures during my investigation of the Valentine matter. Dan Valentine, ex-gangster, and, of course, your policyholder. But then his wife was killed, too. Then his lawyer. Then his daughter. The girl that I... Thirty seconds after Terry Valentine died in my arms, I was stumbling down the gravel path that led from her house to the road. It had all happened so suddenly I can't say that what I did from there on or what I felt was entirely rational. All I know is I hadn't heard a car leave the area, which meant the two killers were still somewhere nearby. Then in the dim light, I saw the car. A man was climbing into it. Hey! Hey, stop! Stop or I'll shoot! Stop! Get out of there. Get out of there and get your hands up. I'm a hit. I'm afraid to move. Come on, get out. Come on. I'm coming, I'm coming. You two, come on, come on. It's no use on him, mister. He used up. You've got him real good. (laughs) I need a doctor. Help me get to a doctor. Stop right there. Doctor. Stand still. You pretty tough fella. What's your name? Sisto. Sisto what? It's good enough for you. I need a doctor. Bad. <coughs> Listen. Ooh. Tell it to me. Tell it to me right now. If you don't tell it to me now, you'll never tell it to anybody. Tell it. No. Tell it. I need a doctor. Tell it. I die first. Johnny. Johnny. What is this? Who's he? He's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. Now you better give me that gun, Johnny. The state will take care of him. Thanks. I should have done it. I wanted to do it. I know, son. Come on, let's get out of here. But I didn't get out of there. I waited around while they dug the body of the other man out of the smashed-up car and while they carried the still limp form of Teresa Valentine away. She was the third member of the family who had died violently within three days. Sorry about it, Donna. Inspector, I was hoping I might have been wrong. That she wasn't dead. Oh, you weren't wrong. Which one shot her? Huh? The dead one? Or the one we still got in the hospital? Oh, I don't know. Both of them, I guess. You don't feel like talking to it. I'm just trying to pin it down. What about him? Can't get much out of him so far. He's in pretty bad shape. Let me ask him some questions, Inspector. I'm no police officer. I don't have to obey any rules. Now take it easy, kid. You were about to do that once, and we'd be holding you for murder if you'd gone ahead. I know how you feel about Teresa Valentine. Has he said anything at all? Nothing. We found papers on him and the other one that makes him brothers, Sisto and Darby Chianti, from New York. So far, there doesn't seem to be any connection with the Valentines. Uh, but people like Valentine make a lot of enemies. That girl doesn't figure. Yeah. I know you talked to her a lot these last couple of days, Johnny. What'd you say? Oh, nothing that had anything to do with this. You know yourself, she didn't even know her name was Valentine until her father got shot at. Yeah, that could have been an act. And you could have been 20 feet tall. Just trying. Try with that punk you got upstairs in the hospital. We will, Johnny. We will. Just... Pardon me. Johnny. 
Johnny. Mm. Yeah, bad news. Maybe I spoke too soon. Why? Sister Chianti died five minutes ago. Expense account, item 10, 10 bucks, car rental. I went out to the Valentine house once more. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Hello, Mrs. Hirchino. Please come in. So many policemen, so many reporters. I've been trying to close the house. Sure. I know how you must feel. I mean about her. What of these uh, Chianti brothers? Well, we don't know much about them yet. The New York police are still doing a rundown on them. Uh, don't let me stop you, whatever you're doing. I'll just look around if you don't mind. All right. Oh, well, one thing. Yes? Did Mr. Valentine make any provision for you? Yeah. He thought to me. A thousand dollars. <laughs> whatever he was, the man I knew was kind and good. And his sins had been forgiven him. I spent two hours or better going from room to room, looking at the oils that Dan Valentine had painted. Pastoral scenes, happy scenes, gay scenes, all of them with colorful Italian backgrounds. I was thinking about that when I walked into Inspector DeBacca's office late that afternoon. I don't get it, Johnny. Don't get what? Here. This came from New York on the Chanty Boys. Oh, they came to this country when they were 18 and 21. Both of them were naturalized citizens, lived with their father. Records? Not a thing. No trouble ever. What else? That's about it. New York police can't seem to locate their old man. Disappeared about a week ago. Lived on the east side. What's about him? Well, that's another funny thing. He's taken out his papers and was due for an examination with the immigration people this week. They're looking for him, too. <laughs> We went out and had dinner together and talked about the case. It had been a strange one. The deaths were useless, the motives unknown. I parted company with Inspector DeBaca and went back to my hotel to trouble it out with sleep. About 11 o'clock, I had a phone call. Johnny Dollar. This is DeBaca. Old man Chianti just showed up, but I said him off. He wants to take his two sons back to New York for burial. 20 minutes later, I was standing in the coroner's office while Inspector DeBaca led a small, wizened old man into the room and sat him down on one of the chairs. Mr. Chanty, this is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? Mr. Chanty. I read about you. You killed my boys. Is it so? Yes. They'd killed four other people. I know, I know. But... Why did they kill the Valentine family, Mr. Chanty? Why did they kill Conrad Webster, the lawyer? Do you know why? She... I know. Then tell me. They're all dead now. I'm... I'm still alive, Mr. Dollar. He refused to talk about his sons or any of their activities. DeBaca held him to answer to the immigration officials... He remained in his cell, silent and noncommittal to all visitors, including the chaplain. I appeared before the coroner's jury the following morning and was cleared of any charges. Pietro Chianti still had said nothing. And he looked at me as though he was going to keep on saying nothing. Uh, Mr. Chianti? I see you, Mr. Dollar. More questions? Dan Valentine's wife was your daughter, wasn't she? Wasn't she? All right, you don't have to admit it. I have a copy of the marriage license right here. It came from New York this morning. She was my daughter. Is that all you have to say now? I no talk. Then I will, Mr. Chanty. Because your daughter, Mrs. Valentine, had a daughter herself, Teresa. A lovely, wonderful girl that your two sons killed. I happen to know that girl. I might have been in love with her, I don't know. But I do know... She had to die, too. What? This uh, Conrad Webster, Mr. Valentine, and my own daughter and granddaughter, they had to die. All bad. You? See, I order it. You ordered it? And who are you? God? I am the father. When a daughter... 
Marry's a bad man. Only bad can come from it. The granddaughter was then bad. He come to our village many years ago. Take her away. He and the man Webster help him. It, it lived with me. The stealing of my own flesh and blood. All this time it grow inside of me. I am old, but I keep on living. Only so I can come here and find him and destroy him. And her and the daughter and the lawyer man who help him. And I destroyed them through my sons. A whole family. Vendetta. Was that it? <laughs> if you like. Vendetta. He was a bad man who did bad things. Batman. I, I smoke now. You have a cigar, eh? The disposition of old Pietro Chianti is up to the immigration department. I didn't stay around New Orleans to learn the results of all the extensive examinations that would have to be completed to test his sanity. I'd had enough of the town. Expense account, item 11, $140.20, hotel and board. Item 12, $28, car rental miscellaneous. That includes flowers to the Valentine family. Item 13, same as item 1, $175, transportation back home. Expense account total, $1,290.38. Remarks? Whenever I close my eyes, I can see a lovely girl standing at the bottom of a long, curving stairway. Smiling. Because I'm in the room. That's all. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, please, there'll be another exciting story for you beginning next Monday night. Monday, the Lorco Diamond Matter, in which a trip to Algiers makes Come With Me to the Casbah sound like an invitation to a Sunday school picnic. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lillian Baeff, Betty Lou Gerson, Barney Phillips, Will Wright, Forrest Lewis, Marvin Miller, Jay Novello, and Jack Boyles. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 